So yeah, so my, my name is Evan Morikawa. I'm also an engineer here at Nihilus. Uh, specifically wanted to share with you a little bit about some of the techniques that we've been using to make our API substantially faster and hopefully other ones that can sort of be more broadly applicable uh, beyond that as well. Uh, so first of all, when talk about what it means to make a faster like API here. What are we talk what are we like talking here at the end of the day? Um, at at one level, there's just about starting to like set a goal for what we want to achieve, and I'll go into some more details about like what that means a bit in a second. Uh, there's also a lot of steps around measuring and profiling and actually like getting to what you need to fix some of these issues and then making sure that these issues don't crop up again and come back and uh, bite you later. Uh, so to sort of overview about what I mean by making an API faster, let me just sort of start with the goal that we were intending here. Uh, the big goal was here is we, this metric that we have called P90, the request is less than 500 milliseconds. So back in a little bit, so like what that uh, means more precisely. Basically, whenever you use our API, whenever you try to send a web request to our API, before some of these optimizations, it might take several seconds at worst to give you back a set of email threads. It might take several seconds to send a message. It might take many hundreds of milliseconds to even just get a whole list of, of accounts and threads and calendars and events and anything else you might want out of our API. Uh, that was unacceptably slow for us. Uh, most of these should give you the results instantly, even though you might have mailboxes with billions and billions of items in them. Uh, so we set a goal of about 500 milliseconds. And specifically, that's, that was sort of a benchmark that both felt like it was achievable given where we currently were, plus has reasonable standards of across the rest of the industry for other APIs you might want. The P90 piece is about uh, that we just accept, and you'll actually see this very clearly in bits, that uh, there's a large amount of variability, partly within and partly outside of our control, about how much time it actually takes. Think of it as the worst case scenario average, if you will. It's, it basically means that all requests, 90% um, of requests will take less than 500 milliseconds. There will always be outliers, which we'll actually talk about in a second. Um, but beyond that, we want a majority of our requests, effectively most of the time, you'll always get a response in less than half a second, uh, which ideally makes for a much nicer developer experience. There are a couple caveats there. Uh, defining goals like this are have a little bit of extra things we need to tweak. Uh, for example, we wanted to, there are, we have a whole bunch of endpoints that we intentionally keep open for 30 seconds at a time. We need to make sure to filter those out. There are a bunch of endpoints uh, that flutter around. So, so we needed to set a standard, in our case, a 15 minute trailing average for requests being less than half a second, 90% of the time. Um, so this is the goal we had to meet. Uh, so now the question is, so how do you go about tackling and addressing something like that? And that's about how we measure things here at Nihilus, particularly around performance uh, related to the API. Um, and for that, I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo and mostly just say that we here really like Honeycomb as a tool to diagnose this. Uh, let me show you what Honeycomb is right now. Uh, Honeycomb is an ability to take a lot of data that we have about our endpoints uh, and make a lot of graphs about them very, very quickly and be able to permute through them and change things at will. So for example, this is actually the main graph we were using to determine this, as you can see, this like P90 here metric on request time. Uh, and you can see it, it's pretty noisy, but for the most part is here, and that number is in milliseconds, is less than our 500 millisecond goal here. Um, uh, and all those caveats I mentioned about that goal, you can see all sort of all of that put into here, like we don't particularly care about your upload speed or your download speed of file attachments. We don't care about send points, a couple of minor things like that. That's mostly what this is about. Uh, but one of the great powers of a tool like this is the ability to give you a large amount of information quickly and then very quickly play around with it to see what's going on under the hood. So when we were diagnosing this, a very big question was like, where is this slowness coming from? Is there any endpoint slower than another? Um, luckily, this gives you tools to be able to just uh, like very, very quickly uh, break down by, in this case, request shape. Uh, I can run that query again. And here it's going to give us a lot of data. That just broke down all the queries by, uh, by particular requests. And we have a lot of them down here. As you can see, uh, people that are hitting messages or hitting accounts or files or threads. Uh, so now suddenly we can see very clearly which endpoints 
are worse than others, or we can see like, oh, this looks like this is, there's this outlier here coming from the messages. Uh, the ability to quickly diagnose and break down the problem like this really helps for diagnosing some of these issues. Um, a particularly nice feature that was recently introduced is this uh, histogram here, which is a very visual way to show you what I mean by like average and worst case and P90. And furthermore, you can break that down by particular endpoint. Uh, so very visually here, I can visually see that when I'm asking for a thread with a particular ID, it's pretty consistent time-wise. Like all of those times are within a pretty narrow band around uh, 200 milliseconds or so. But some of our other endpoints, uh, like this one, like grabbing an individual message, has a huge amount of variability in it. Um, and that kind of information is extremely valuable when diagnosing, when sort of when picking where to go first to get at this problem, uh, and then also getting a handle of why and figuring out what's going on with some of these. In the case of this messages one, the reason why it's so variable is because that's including in this time the amount of time it takes to download a message. And some messages are very small, and some messages might be megabytes of text that we're sending through. And you can very clearly and visually see that in this sort of heat map here, uh, which really adds to the visual density and the ability to quickly diagnose things like that. Um, this has helped a lot, consider, com especially compared to some of the other tools we might have used. Um, we're sending a lot of, a lot of this we're extracting from our log data. Um, the interface to very quickly diagnose this makes a big difference, because if I wanted to try and do something similar through Kibana, it's a very tedious and very complicated process that I still to this day don't quite know how to set that up. Anyway, um, having good diagnostic tools is definitely a first step to measuring what you need to start making improvements. Um, so once we got a piece of measuring down, like now I know that there is something that looks really bad and we need to know why. Uh, that, those tools just showed us that the account endpoint really sucks, but the thread one doesn't, but now I need to know why, so what sort of tools can we use to get at that? Uh, the first one is just basic uh, profiling. And because we run on a lot of Python, we um, just were able to run a basic C profile, which is the main Python uh, profiler. That unfortunately spits out a huge glob of text that's kind of difficult to read and, and go through on your terminal. There's a really nice library called SnakeFizz uh, on GitHub that you can use to take those outputs and make yourself uh, these nice flame charts here that show you exactly from the start of when we get the request until we give it back to you, what is the computer doing? Um, and here you can actually very clearly see there's like a, whatever the, whatever this baked dot pi is over here is clearly taking most of the time. That's exactly where I'm going to look to think about how to better diagnose what's going on here. Um, actually, in this case, this was demonstrating for us the importance of optimizing the way that we created our queries. This is all about creating baked queries for our system. Um, individual profiling like this works very well on an individual computer when you're running your own code locally. Um, and you can sort of isolate one thing. However, we very quickly found that uh, we had sort of reached the maximum optimization of this. The problem was not coming from the code when you run it once from end to end in this nice, clean environment. The problem came when it was on a huge production server, when it was coming in from thousands of different places, spread across tons of different machines. There are all sorts of uh, demons in the system that can really change the way your uh, your performance uh, behaves. So profiling on those sorts of systems is a little bit more complicated, uh, which I'm sure if anyone has tried to profile on large distributed systems, you know is kind of a pain. Uh, so one of the things that we did to mitigate this was uh, we have these concepts of these profilable greenlets, these greenlet profile collectors. These are all internal tools that we wrote uh, to help us profile what's going on with a system at scale. Um, and basically, without going into too much detail, all it does is that every some while, every like couple milliseconds, it just asks where the program is now. Um, and it assumes that over the course of a long period of time, we'll eventually get to most of the places the program is hanging out, and we can generate a similar profile flame graph. Um, in the case of our API diagnostics, that's what we did, and we got a flame graph that looked like this. Uh, the minute we got this flame graph out, it became immediately obvious where the bottleneck was. There's this huge chunk in the middle here of the computer just sitting around spooling, doing something that's preventing our API from giving you your result faster. Um, 
Specifically, that, uh, that is the PBK DF2 library encrypting your passwords. Um, so that point was, became pretty obvious, though, we should like make some caches for this, speed this up. Um, the implementation of that I'll talk about in a little bit later. Uh, but nonetheless, once we, being able to see what is wrong is usually most of like a good chunk of the battle. Uh, this is what it was like before we made the change, and this is what it was looked like after we made the change. Um, the scales are a little different. The, the point to note here is in this previous graph, there's a huge obvious chunk of something being dumb. Um, and in this chunk, it's just the sheer nature of we just need to do a lot of stuff to give you uh, the results back. This is like definitely closer to a better optimized uh, system that definitely helps contribute to where we want to go here. Um, so now that we were able to finally like first see what was wrong with the problem, see the pro get a good profile of it, now it sort of comes along to just fixing it. Uh, in this case, we, we got huge wins by preventing us from on every single request, rehashing your password over and over and over again. We sort of just cache, we can cache that for some amount of time and tune that at whim. Uh, this is the actual graph that shows the before and after that, like uh, Yosemite like drop off there is the request time for the API getting uh, a fa like fact faster by almost a factor of two here, despite there being a consistent count across, across the board. Uh, once again, this is another very important thing about having the monitoring here is that guarantees that we have the same, we can see the results of what we've been able to do. Um, and here's another good example of another very nice graph to see where all of a sudden you just stop doing a lot of dumb things in your request, in your request sequence. Uh, this was actually a separate issue that we diagnosed here, which was just seeing that sometimes some queries were just being really dumb. Something was not indexed, and the minute we added that index, all of a sudden it dropped off, and we didn't have to worry about that anymore. Um, and then the sort of the final piece to pull it together is then the, being able to monitor and alert that as well. Because once we have fixed it, it's very important that that issue doesn't sort of creep back up on top of you again. Um, for that, we spend a lot of effort adding a lot of metrics into the system so we can get these stacked charts to see like from end to end, from the minute you ask our API until we deliver your result, where is the code hanging out? Um, in this case, we can see some of it is inside of the OmniProxy layer, just dealing with web requests. Some of it is inside of our server. Um, but this really helps us keep track over time of exactly where, uh, which piece of the system is suddenly starting to misbehave. Um, the final component of this is then the alerting on it as well. Uh, so Honeycomb Plus, in addition to PagerDuty, has this nice feature where we can then just tell it, um, oh, if this request gets over some amount of time again, send a notification somewhere, and we'll get Page to let us know that it's time to look at this issue. Uh, so hopefully a lot of these measures will not just uh, give us a cool presentation to talk about how we made things faster, but continue to keep them uh, fast as well, because uh, this job's really not done until you've also put the monitoring and alerting on it as well. Yeah, so that was just a quick overview of one uh, just optimization that we've made across the whole API. Uh, as you can see here, that made the whole system two, three, sometimes in some cases, depending on the endpoint, four times faster, uh, which we thought was a pretty good for a couple weeks of work, and certainly something we want to continue to uh, improve on in the future. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, thank you very much.